Hi everybody, my name is Sanjana and welcome to today's video. I'm going to give an introduction to English tenses. So, even strongest writers can fall prey to common verb tense mistakes from time to time. The problem with that though is that many people end up overcorrecting. In this lesson, I'll be sharing when to use each of the following tenses. I'm also going to share an example of what the tense looks like in a sentence or in a question. So this is just a quick guide which, you, which would be helpful for you. So the word tense comes from the Latin word tempus, which means time. The tense of a verb shows the time when an action or condition is occurred. In English, the tense also may provide emphasis and may determine whether or not an action or condition was continuous or repetitive. These are the types of sen sen tenses, present tense, past tense, and future tense. So for today's lesson, let's begin with the present tense. In each category, we have simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. I'll explain it, I'll show that to you later. First, we'll give a brief introduction to each of the tenses. So present tense expresses an unchanging, repeated or reoccurring action or situation that exists only now, that is in present. Past tense expresses an action or situation that was start, started and finished in the past. Future tense expresses an action or situation that will occur in the future. So here, I have four different tenses, that is present simple, present continuous, present perfect, and present perfect continuous. The continuous is as same as progressive. You may know it as progressive. They are the same thing for this lesson. So let's, let's begin with the present simple tense. Present simple tense is a tense we use for general facts, for regular actions, and for schedules. So this is stuff that doesn't change. Like he speaks English, for example. He doesn't speak Spanish. That's a simple fact for, a, like, for regular action. So things you do every day or for every week, for example. And schedules means like bus or an airplane or maybe a car schedule something that maintains a regular schedule. Another example, actually two examples. First is, I work on Mondays. So your work is my work. I work on Monday is a simple present tense. Now, a negative. I don't eat lunch at two o'clock. So these are simple present tense statements. In this case, I've just seen, I've just Simple statements of fact. Okay, so let's continue to the next one. The second tense is the present continuous tense. So we use present continuous tense for continuing actions. And that means actions that are happening now. So for example, I'm teaching, I'm standing, I'm speaking. Those are the actions happening now. So we use it for continuing actions like physical actions, we also use it for trends. So things happening in your society right now, for example. So examples would be like that TV show is becoming popular or the world is getting warmer. So these are the things happening now. Also, we can use it for one-time actions as well. And this relates a little bit to the future tense, which I'm going to talk about later too, but something happening just one time in the future. You can use the continuous form to describe that. So, for example, I'm working this Saturday. So sometimes students ask, what's the difference? Why is it I'm working this Saturday and not I work this Saturday? Remember, we talked about the present simple tense. We use that for regular actions for general facts. So if you usually work on Saturdays, you should use the present simple tense. I work on Saturdays. 
if however this saturday is special and you don't usually work on saturdays you should use the continuous tense i'm working this saturday so it sounds like that's not a typical thing for you that i'm working this saturday okay let's go on to the third tense the third tense is the present perfect tense we use the perf present perfect tense for a general life experience or lack of something that you did in the past but not at a specific point in time the specific point in time is not so important here or maybe we don't know so for example first we will take a negative example he has never been to spain he has never been to spain in this case no life experience of going to spain is what this means so this is an example of present perfect tense here we have he has remember we need to attach has or have before our past participle verb let's continue to the next tense now the next tense is the present perfect continuous tense we use this tense for actions that started in the past and continue to the present so something you started doing in the past at some point it's not always important when but that action continues so you use this a lot to talk about your study for example we we, we use words like since and for and maybe ago with this as well so an example of this would be i have been studying english for 2 years so here we see i have been this i have is contracted to reduced form of i have i have been studying so this is the continuous or the progressive form in this case i have used the word for i have used for because i am using 2 years which is a length of time we can also use since for example i have been studying english since 2016 so we use since before a specific point of point in time we can use ago as well usually we pair it with since example i have been studying english since 2 years ago so th these are the few different changes you need to make there i have given all the examples in one slide so that you can compare and understand each of the understand the each of the examples closely and compare it with each other you can pause the video and look and take a close look at each of the examples now let's move on to the second group for today which is the past tense these are the four points in the past year past simple past continuous past perfect and past perfect continuous tense first one is the past simple or just simple past tense simple past tense is used for actions that started and finished in the past so for example i thought simple present tense earlier so i used the past tense here i thought simple present tense because the actions started because the action started and finished in the past another example i worked all night so my work work is my work i use simple past tense worked because the action started and finished in the past another example a negative one they didn't come they didn't come to the party they didn't come to the office the action was in the past 
it refers to something that did not happen in the past. There, so there was no action in the past, but it's over, it's done, it's finished. So we use simple past tense to talk about these simple actions that started and finished in the past. Okay, let's go on to the next tense. Past continuous tense. Past continuous tense is for actions that were continuing in the past. So this one is when we often use with a specific point in time along with it. So for example, first, we were listening to music. We were listening to music yesterday. Or we can say we were listening to music at 8 p.m. When were you listening to music? When was that action continuing? At 8 p.m. or yesterday? So this is a common, so this is common to include a point in time with this grammar point. Another example like I was doing something, something, ing form is there. So this one is that some people have questions about, like why should I use that? When should I use that? It's typically used in response to someone's questions, like what were you doing last night? For example, or what were you doing this morning? So you want to know someone's activities at a specific point in time. You can use this grammar point to respond to that question. Let's move along to the past perfect tense. Our next one, past perfect tense, is for actions that were completed or not completed at non-specific point in the past. A non-specific point in the past. So this one is kind of difficult and it's perhaps not quite used in everyday language. So a conversation, this is used a bit more in writing. This is a grammar point that's especially helpful when we want to show kind of a timeline in our writing to show that an action happened before another action in the past. We can use the past perfect tense. So here's a couple of examples. First one, they hadn't departed yet. So here hadn't is the reduced form of had not. They hadn't departed yet and I had taken my lunch break. So we, we would use sentences like these if we are telling a story. So we are telling a story about the past and we want to show that one action happened before another action when we want to talk about the earlier action. So the things that happened earlier, like more in the past, we use the past perfect tense. Then we can use the simple past tense to explain the action that happened closer to the present. So for example, I had taken my lunch break when I saw the delivery man came or something like that. So you can see my second point there. That's kind of a strange example. I saw the delivery man came or anything. You can add as per your convenience. But you see that my second point there uses the simple past tense. I saw the delivery man came. So I had taken my lunch break further in the past. When I saw the delivery man came, so that's a simple past tense. So this is probably more common in writing, but it is used in speaking as well too. So this is what we use a past perfect tense to do. Let's move on to the Another challenging point, past perfect continuous tense. Past perfect continuous, these are sentences or questions for actions that started in the past and continued to like an unspecified point in the past. So the action has finished as well. That's a key difference with the present perfect continuous. So the action has finished as well. That's a key difference with the present perfect continuous. The action in present perfect continuous is happening now. It started at some point in the past and then some unspecified point. So maybe we don't know exactly when the action finished, but it's done. It's complete. So let's look at an example. They had been waiting since 3 p.m. 
so here they had been waiting this shows us that there was something waiting period that was, there was some waiting period so the waiting period started at 3 pm and the waiting continued and continued we don't know when the waiting finished but this grammar point shows us that the waiting has finished we wanted to talk only about this period of time the people were waiting in the past so this is the grammar point that we used to talk about things that were happening over a period of time in the past and then finished so this is something again we tell you we use when telling stories we are showing a sequence of events actually now let's move on to the last group of today's lesson the future tense so there are there are as usual four types of future tense future simple future continuous future perfect and future perfect continuous so future tense is to talk about the things that are going to happen in the later period so we'll start with a future simple tense this is for actions that are planned or unplanned for the future they are actually there are actually a lot of different things we can do to make the future simple tense some very common ways of making future simple tense are through using will and won't words like will and won't and going to and not going to earlier in this lesson i mentioned using the continuous tense the present continuous tense the ing form of verb to make statements about the future also so there are many ways to make a simple future statement let's look at a couple of examples first i'll have a glass of wine this uses will and i that is the redu reduced form of i will have a glass of wine that's a future statement also he is going to cook dinner in this one i have used going to to express them so these are just simple things about planned or perhaps unplanned like he is not going to cook dinner would be an unplanned thing in the future or something that's not going to happen in the future okay let's go on to the future continuous tense now future continuous tense this is for actions you think you will or will not be continuing in the future in the future something you think will be continuously happening is what this means let's uh, let's look at an example i'm not going to be working at company xyz i am not going to be working at a company xyz so here you can see we have going to i am not going to plus we have a verb in the continuous tense i am not going to work, be working at a company xyz meaning in other words i am not going to have a job at company xyz or i am not going to continue my position at company xyz in the future that's my thought now in the present about the future so at that time in the future like in one year for example i'll say i will not be working at that company or i'm not going to be working at company xyz so that's the idea behind the other future continuous tense let's move along to the future perfect tense then future perfect tense here the actions that you think will have started at some point in the future so remember you are thinking in the present right now but this grammar point is used to talk about something something you imagine in the future that starts at some point and you think might be continuing into the future maybe something started and maybe continues this is the idea here so let's look at an example so you will get an idea about it i will have lived in china for 2 years i will have lived in china for 2 years so here i'm using will to show 
it's a future tense statement i will plus have lived this is the same thing that we used for the present perfect tense that we talked about earlier that part past participle plus have or has but we are attaching it to a future tense will i for like for example i will have lived in china for 2 years so when would we use this so for example someone asks you a question about your future you say uh, like where do you see yourself in like 2025 for example or where do you imagine you are going to be in 2025 you could say oh i have lived in china for 2 years so meaning at that time in 2020 i will have lived in china for 2 years so that means not now but in the future at that point in time in the future i will have started living in china and that will have continued for 2 years so that's what that means that's a guess about the future a future time period that something will have continued in the future so again quite a challenge in grammar point but something definitely to look into so again it's not used perhaps as much as the present perfect tense but great for storytelling and imagining your future okay, so let's move on to the last point for today's lesson the future perfect continuous tense future perfect continuous tense is similar to the last one but for actions you think will or won't have started and will be continuing so something that's going to have started again in the future something started and the action will have continued into the future example i won't have been eating meat for 3 months i won't have been eating meat for 3 months so for this one let's imagine that you decided last month to stop eating meat so that's fine actually so for this sentence that's okay you made a decision last month to stop eating meat but then someone asks you about your progress like how is it going what are you going to do next month and you can say to yourself well at this point at that point next month in the future you can use the sentence i won't so won't means will not i won't have been eating meat for 3 months so that means from the point in time i started in the past until the point in the future so not present but in the future this entire time my me not eating meat this that is going to have continue have to continue so you are making a guess about the future so we use this to talk about something some future thing that will have con that will be continued or will be continuing into the future so we'll have continued meaning something that started in the past and continues into the future or will be continued so there are a couple of like very very subtle grammar points to consider too which may be tough grammar points but they are really good for storytelling and for talking about your future as well so i know this was a lot of information in this lesson if you have some more questions or anything related to the, these tenses about any details you can comment down below so that's everything for this lesson thank you very much for watching i hope that it was helpful for you thank you